I'm Shigao Li. I'll be happy to present our work, Good Bot, Bad Bot, Characterizing Automated Browsing Activity, on behalf of Babak Aminazad, Amir Ramati, and Nick Nikiforakis. Webbots are programs that perform web requests and interact with websites or even users on the Internet. Bots are everywhere on the Internet. In 2019, there are nearly 40% activities on the Internet belong to webbots. Malicious bots are responsible for more than 60% of bot traffic. Bot detection has been a problem with the evolution of bot detection techniques and their evasion techniques. Bots can be used for benign purposes. They can be used for providing indexing services like search engine bots, or creating content previews like Slack or Twitter, or they can be used for academic or industry purposes. On the other hand, bots can be used for a variety of malicious purposes. They can be used to perform credential stuffing attacks, steal sensitive files, or probe web applications for vulnerabilities. Now we understand that bots are irritating sometimes and we don't want these malicious bots access our website. There are several ways to block bots, but the underlying assumption is that we can detect them. There is a wide variety of automated browsing software and environments that making bot detection difficult. These web bots can be in the form of basic crawlers like curl or python requests, or can be advanced as automated browsers such as Firefox or Chrome controlled by Selenium. The webbot can also be as fast as ZMAP, scanning the whole internet within a few minutes, or they can be a combination of all above. This makes bot detection difficult because people have to address new features for each new browsing environment. There are also various evasion techniques that make bot detection even harder. For example, webbots can change their user agent headers to pretend to be human users, they can also browse in with an automated browser to simulate clicking or navigating behavior, or use a proxy to constantly change IP addresses, preventing the IP-based blocking. Current research mostly study on public web server traffic, where it is difficult to label mixed human and bot traffic, and there is no public dataset of pure bots available. Moreover, there is not much study on the bot impact toward normal websites. Our paper answers these questions. How can we build a bot-only dataset? And what is the population and types of behavior of malicious bots? And how do bot activities affect web server security? We answer these questions by introducing a technique that avoids the issue of differentiating between users and bots through the concept of honey sites. We design and build Aristeus, a system that provides flexible deployment and management of honey sites. The honey sites are high interaction honeypots with real web applications and full functionality, equipped with a series of state of the art fingerprint and identification techniques. Based on the data we captured in a seven month period, we present a systematic study on the internet bot traffic. Here's the overview of Aristeus. It consists of three parts. The first part is honey site management, which provides flexible honey site creation. The second part is log aggregation. It has a central server, which periodically collecting log files from honey sites. The last part is bot traffic analysis. It consists a series of analyzing scripts in order to extract information from log files and identify bot activities. The control center determines when and how to create honey sites. According to the list of domains, control centers spawn honey sites using the AWS. The next part is our honey site. Honey sites are AWS instances populated and distributed around the world by scripts, installed with real web application and equipped with various fingerprinting techniques. In the next page, we will introduce what is inside a single honey site. On the top level, the honey site is running one of the five web applications. Currently, we selected WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, PHP Admin, and Webmin. In order to capture as much information from bots as possible, we created three levels of fingerprinting techniques. For browser fingerprinting, we created a variety of tests. For example, when we set content security policy to only allow resources from root domain, and we ask clients to load a resource from a random subdomain, clients that honor in the CSP will refuse to load and send CSP report back to our servers. 
In the behavioral fingerprint part, we test whether the clients have certain behaviors. For example, whether the client is still loading customized 404 pages when requested resource is invalid. We inject these 404 pages with JavaScript and image resources. If they are loaded, it means the client is not ignoring the error page when the request is invalid. The caching and resource sharing behavior is another aspect of behavioral fingerprinting. In order to make sure that clients are not sending the same URL over and over again, we utilize the cache breaker. On the bottom level, we apply the TOS fingerprinting techniques on the OS and network stack. Different TOS libraries have different characteristics, which can allow us to later attribute requests back to the same software or the machine. The passive attribute is particularly important because later we will see if a bot does not support JavaScript, our system will not be able to collect browser fingerprints. For example, from the Cypher suite, signature algorithm, e-curves, and extensions, we can find from our signature database that this TLS handshake is initiated from the basic Go language HTTP request, Go HTTP client. For the second part of log aggregation, the logs are stored into Elasticsearch clusters for later processing. For our experiment, we registered 100 domains and make sure they are not registered ever before to eliminate the effect of residual trust. Then we deploy these domains and not publicly advertise them so we will be able to capture a bot-only dataset. We used a central server to collect logs from all 100 honey sites. In the next part, we present our data that captured from the seven months long experiment. Our dataset contains seven months period of data from January 24th to August 24th, 2020. The dataset contains 26.4 million requests with 287,000 unique IP addresses. The total amount of data is over 200 gigabytes. From our dataset, we continue to observe new traffic from newly emerged bot IP addresses even after seven months. The daily requests are gradually increasing as more bots discover our website. We also interested on how they found us, so we analyzed the bot host header. There are 44% of bots visit us through the IP address. They could be originated from IP space scanning or network monitoring. There are 26% of bots visit us through domain. They could be scanning the DNS zone files or certificate transparency logs. There are 30% of bots do not present any host header. In this part, we present on the resources bot interested. The numbers in each cell represent a specific URL distribution over five different web applications. Moreover, the icon on each cell indicates the availability of a certain resource. A tick mark means the resource exists, a cross mark means it does not, and the forbidden mark means the resource exists on the server but not accessible for clients. As we can see from the heat map, these requests are not evenly distributed, which means bots are mostly application specific. For example, bots found the website is running the WordPress, then they start targeting the login page of wp-login.php, wp-admin, and xpmrpc.php. We found that most popular URIs are login endpoints for each web application. Another interesting observation is that changelog.txt requests are only on Drupal instances, but it does not exist on our instances. This is because the file exists on an older version of Drupal, and this action is about trying to fingerprint our applications to determine the exact version of Drupal. In the aspect of bot intention, we categorize bot as benign, malicious, and gray by their intention and activities. Benign bots are asking for valid resources similar to a normal browser, where malicious bots are sending unsolicited post requests toward login endpoints, or they send invalid requests trying to exploit vulnerabilities. When they cannot be categorized either benign or malicious, they fall into the gray category. Overall, we have 57% of malicious requests, 1.3% of benign requests, and 417 of gray requests. Benign bots are mostly search engine bots, academic and industry scanners, like Googlebot, Bingbot, or Internet Archive. We used reverse DNS verification to verify their identity. 
The malicious bots, on the other hand, including credential boot force attempts and reconnaissance attempts, which includes application fingerprinting, exploitation attempts, scanning for public reachable backdoors, or unprotected sensitive files. There are 50% of the IP addresses only sent a single request and did not exhibit any obviously malicious behavior which require future explorations about their identity. We also compared our malicious IP lists to several public online block list databases. We collect information about malicious IP addresses from nine popular IP block lists. Unfortunately, there are only 13% of malicious IP addresses from our dataset appeared in any of the online databases. This demonstrates the limited coverage of existing block lists. To better understand the nature of these bots, we use the IP2 location database to obtain the type of location of all IP addresses in our dataset. Contrary to our expectation that bots would be located in data centers, a large portion of bots are actually located in the residential IP space. In the aspect of JavaScript support, we found only 0.63% of bots are actually executed JavaScript we provided. This shows the limitation of JavaScript-based fingerprinting techniques, which relies on the client capabilities. On the other hand, TLS fingerprinting provides us very useful information of bots. Overall, we have 558 unique TLS fingerprint in total 10 million TLS fingerprints. Most popular fingerprints are categorized to 14 tools, and the total of 14 tools covered more than 97% of TLS fingerprints. Note that bots only need to support HTTPS connection, compared to 0.63% of bots are capable of executing JavaScript, 35% of bots use the HTTPS connection, even though it's optional. In order to prove the effectiveness of TOS fingerprinting, we use the ground truth search engine bots to verify the accuracy of TOS fingerprinting. The results show that the TOS fingerprint can identify all search engine bots. Then we searched for all requests in our dataset, and we found several mismatch in their stated user agents and the TLS fingerprints. Let's take a look at an example of cloaking and evasion. This request has a Go language HTTP request TLS fingerprint, but it says in the user agent, I am a Firefox browser on Ubuntu. This is not a special case. Overall, we found 86.2% of bots claim to be Firefox or Chrome browsers, but actually they are not. For example, on the bot claiming to be Chrome, 82% of them are actually not Chrome. Only 20% of them are from real Chrome. Similarly, 98% of Firefox requests are actually not from Firefox browsers. They are either from Golangry HTTP requests or Perl requests. On the security vulnerability aspect, we found that public vulnerabilities are quickly being abused. For example, a vulnerability of Netgear Router is released on March 18th, and we immediately observed it just a few hours it went public. There is another exploit that went public on June 30th that was abused at the same day. Overall, we observed requests that try to exploit five remote command execution vulnerabilities short after the vulnerability went public. The short period of weaponizing public exploits remind us that even if you host an unpopular website, deciding to patch a vulnerability over the weekend may already be too late. In summary, we have these takeaways. Firstly, from the statistics, we found that any online website will receive more than a thousand requests per day, only 3% of them can be clearly identified as benign. Secondly, bots are highly selective, targeting the easy to exploit endpoints. We also found 97% of bots are rudimentary HTTP requests, but pretending to be browsers. Unfortunately, only 13% of bot IP addresses appeared in online block lists, which indicates their limited coverage. While most bots are not capable of executing JavaScript, TOS fingerprinting are effective against bot cloaking and evasion. On the security exploits, they are quickly being abused as fast as the same day. In order to contribute about detection research, we made our dataset available to researchers upon request. Thank you for listening to our presentation.